Hi everyone! Today I want to review the new Cosmos EX3, probably one of the best floppy and hard drive emulator for Atari. The device is a project from Juki, but this new enhanced version is a collaboration with Atari.sk. This Cosmos EX version 3 is a limited batch, but I really hope they will keep the production. In this video I will cover the following, if you want to jump to a specific section I'll include the timecode for each. So what is Cosmos EX? Well, it is an all-in-one peripheral that can emulate a floppy drive and a hard drive in ACSI or SCSI mode using an SD card or USB storage device and offers plenty of cool features such as remote control, screencast or shared drive with your computer using your local network. It is based on a custom board and ICs and a Raspberry Pi 3 for the web server and control. The front panel has the four USB ports from the Raspberry Pi a soft switch button and a nice OLED display cycling through the various states and settings. The back port is a sugared interface for the floppy drive. Removing the cover reveals the ACSI connector and is probably the best option for most Atari STs. The larger port is a SCSI port for later machines that support it, such as the MST or the Falcon. If you are planning on using the SCSI port, you will need to plug the two termination resistor networks that came with the accessories if this is the last device in line. Be sure to respect the orientation. There is a little star to help. Now today I want to cover the most tricky aspect of it, the hard drive configuration. The floppy emulation is pretty straightforward and loading an image in one of the three slots can be done using the web interface. The device offers a lot of flexibility, but I will cover my personal favorite configuration using ACSI and the SD card. First, while the device is powered off, you need to select the right mode using the internal switch. My units were shipped as SCSI, so I had to switch it on for ACSI mode. Make sure to remove the resistor networks for ACSI. Then, plug your device to a USB power supply. The device uses up to 830 milliamps, so a power brick is preferred. Many computers are limited to 500 milliamps per USB port and won't provide enough power. Allow a couple of minutes for the device to reconfigure in the proper mode before plugging it to your ST. Once reconfigured, you should see the new mode on the OLED display. If it stays off after two minutes, don't panic. I will show you a trick later in the troubleshooting section. Then turn it back off and using the provided Lotharec SCSI cable, connect your favorite ST machine. Now let's review the software steps. This is one of the many methods to make use of the Cosmos EX, maybe not the fastest, but it should provide a good step-by-step -step approach. Start by connecting the device to your local network. You can also adjust the Cosmos EX settings from the Atari, but I find the web interface easier to navigate for the initial setup. Open a browser and type the IP address your device got from your router. You can get it from the OLED display. Now go into the Settings tab and change ACSI 0 to SD to map your SD card. Power cycle your Cosmos EX. Now is a good time to burn a floppy with the Cosmos EX tools just in case. You can get it from the interface here. You will also need a hard disk driver. I am personally using ICD. You can get it from Atari Essentials. To burn a floppy, I am using Flow IMG and an old computer to write the image to a real floppy but you can also load the image in one of the three virtual floppy drive slots and mark it as active if you have connected the Cosmos EX on an Atari floppy port, internal or external. If everything worked, you should be greeted with the following boot screen on the Atari and have the O drive on your green desktop. Let's switch to medium or high res before moving forward as some tools won't support low res. First, let's run ICD boot to load the ICD driver. Then we'll need to partition the disk using ICD-FMT. Let's select the first entry, it should say SD. Now we need to make sure verify pass is set to zero to avoid a full SD scan, which is not necessary. Enter the partition menu. Clear all the default partitions, select size, I will create a first partition of 16 meg that should come up as a gem partition. Now add all the other partitions you want, they should be BGM type. Don't forget to make them active by ticking them in the on column. Finally, you can proceed with partition entire hard disk. Validate all settings and quit the program. 
this will apply the partitions and reboot. At this point, it is a good idea to power cycle everything. Now our C drive exists, but we want to make it bootable. Switch back to medium res and reload ICD boot. Start HDUtil to install the ICD driver on the C drive. Click on boot and install the driver. At this point, if you were to reset your Atari, you should see your C drive, but don't do it quite yet. There's a last thing we want to do before that. We need to make sure our Cosmos CX driver will also load during boot. Manually add the C drive by clicking on any disk drive, go in options and install disk drive. Install the C drive and repeat with the O drive containing the Cosmos EX files. In the C drive, create a folder called auto. Everything placed here will load by alphabetical order during boot. Open the O drive and copy cc underscore dd in our newly created auto folder. That's it, everything should now work properly. Now you can install again all the other drives D and E for me, as well as the Cosmos EX drive O. You can now save your desktop so the drives can be restored every time. Now everything works, we can take advantage of the shared folder capability. To do so, go in the Cosmos EX config section and under shared drive, enable the service and enter the path and credentials of your server. Depending on the permissions, you will be able to read and write on it from the Atari and exchange or backup files easily with your PC. The default letter assigned for this shared drive is P. We just need to add it to our green desktop and save it. Now let's have a look at some issues and go through the troubleshooting steps. First, let's address a problem that happened on two of the three devices I got. This only applies to the Cosmos EX Revision 3. When switching from SCSI to SESI, the device wouldn't boot again, and I was stuck in a loop. I will skip the details here, but I found the following method to fix the problem. First, make sure the Cosmos EX is not connected to the Atari, just connect the network interface and power. Make sure the internal switch is in ACSI position, using your favorite SSH client, connect to the Raspberry Pi. If you don't remember the address, you can always switch it back to SCSI and check the OLED display. Chances are it will be getting the same IP when you put it back to SCSI. Login the Pi using the login root and password CE. Navigate to the CE folder. Run the CE force flash script. This should detect the mode and reflash the chips for a CSI. The other issues are minor, but could be worth a check. First, the power switch doesn't have enough solder and wires could detach. If you have the equipment, it's a good preventive maintenance to add some flux. Other issue on the V3, I couldn't access the terminal. I'll look into this later. And finally, the SCSI cable is a little bit too tall and creates a bulge in the 3D printed case. Not a big deal, unless you have a tight space. That's it for this video. There are plenty of other options on this device, such as keyboard injector and Steam compatibility, so let me know if this is something you want to see covered. Feel free to subscribe to support this channel and like the video if this was helpful to you, or leave a comment if you have any questions. As always, thanks for watching.